hello in this video we will look at the anatomy and function of liver so the liver basically is the primary structure for elimination of waste synthesis and storage it is the central station of metabolism it means the anabolism and catabolism is occur in the liver so it is used for the homeostasis so the homeostasis mean the maintenance of internal body uh, uh, with the waste are uh, with required things and unrequired things so it will be maintained it means the homeostasis so here is the liver first of all we will understand the anatomical aspect of the liver so here is the hepatic vein and hepatic artery this is the descending aorta as well as the inferior vena cava so this supply the um, blood to the liver is known as the hepatic artery and hepatic vein which that is collect the blood move toward the heart so here you can see in this diagram so this is the two lobes of uh, two lobes of the uh, liver is contain a smaller lobe and bigger lobe so or large lobe so here is the uh, gallbladder and that is the here is the central vein system are present inside so the here is the right and left hepatic duct this hepatic duct is collect the bile so here is the portal vein this portal vein is collect the nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract toward the liver so that is why it is the um, two way uh, double uh, circulatory system it means the uh, one um, artery is come from the basically the vein is come from the portal vein and here is the descending aorta and here is the gallbladder in this way the important thing is that very unique uh, blood, blood circulation due to the portal vein invagination into the liver and insertion of the liver so that is why the primary absorption of the uh, nutrients from the food will move first into the liver and then after the processing and after the um, synthesis or changes changes of the lipids etc and the ldl uh, lipoprotein formation to move then into the uh, vein hepatic vein and then it will be move into the circulation so here is the uh, portal triad of structure so this is a portal triad contain a hepatic artery hepatic and uh, portal vein as well as bile duct which that is bind in the uh, in the hexagonal shape which that is the hexagon and it is showing in the figure you can see it is known as a liver lobule and here is the central vein the central vein is moved toward the heart through a inferior vena cava so in this way i hope you make sense there is a portal triad this portal triad is known as a portal tract so important thing is that it is mix the a bile as uh, sorry lymph lymphatic so this is the lymph so this is the lymphatic system are present in the liver so this is the lymph as well as the artery and vein which that is collect uh, this fluid and move into the uh, vein so this vein is the hepatic vein is the also known as a central vein so in this way here is we will discuss about the canal this is canal system is known as a is known as the sinusoids uh, when the blood move toward the center vein through a sinusoid so here is the hepatic cells this is the one um, sinusoid i am drawing here and th this is the hepatic cell and it is the hepatocytes so this is the hepatocyte and here is the sinusoid sinusoidal endothelial and it is the space of this which contain a lipoprotein and in this way here is the blue color and mixture of the uh, blood uh, for example the lymph as well as the um, uh, circulatory blood basically is the um, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will mix and mix together and here is the inside is the sinusoid which that is the blood will pass from here to the central vein so in this way here is the sinusoid 
and this is the basically the blue color showing in the steeler cell hepatic steeler cell and the brown color show that the kupfer cell so, so this is the kupfer cell so this was the uh, 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 overview of the liver lobule which that's contain a unit of uh, basically uh, sinusoids so you can understand as well so in this way here is we can uh, 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 we can get the concept about the function so let's begin to understand their physiological function uh, synthesis recycling detoxification storage and conversion and metabolism so first of all here is the tissue for example muscle tissue or any other tissue which that is after the metabolites will be produced this metabolite is can be ammonia or other things which that is move into the blood and after as well as lactic acid and fatty acid from the adipose tissue so the triacylglycerol and fatty acid will be formed this fatty acid and ammonia and lactic acid and other other things uh, will uh, enter into the blood circulatory system and after this moving into the uh, liver so after this liver uh, absorption because the ammonia is very toxic for us so that why ammonia are required uh, 500 ml of water per gram ammonia excretion so it means our need of water is very less as compared to that so it means the conversion of the ammonia into the urea is very important and in this way the synthesis can be convert into the ammonia into the uh, uh, urea so it's the nitro nitrogenous waste urea uric acid ammonia plasma protein prothrombin fibrinogen and albumin bile lipids cholesterol and lipoprotein which that is synthesis and in this way the for example first of all we will understand the urea cycle for the synthesis of the urea from the ammonia so here is the ammonia will bind with the carbon dioxide the first ammonia which that is the ornithine are present this ornithine convert into the citrulline by the binding of the ammonia and carbon dioxide so with addition of the ornithine to form a citrulline so the citrulline convert with the second ammonia to arginosuccinate and this arginosuccinate basically is go into the arginine this arginine is basically is in the presence of arginase enzyme to produce urea and arginine will convert by the oxidation of the urea basically uh, separation of the urea by the arginase to move again the ornithine so in the case of the sugar for example that is the conversion also or synthesis of the fatty acid we will discuss here so the sugar will convert into the acetyl coa by the glycolysis and the pyruvate will convert into the acetyl coa and this coa will be released and two acetyl coa will form to a acetoacetate and hmg coa hydroxymethyl glutaryl coa reductase enzyme which that is convert this acetoacetate into the cholesterol and this cholesterol formation as well as the bile bile production so in this way basically is the cholesterol we convert into the bile so this bile uh, so is this cholesterol extra cholesterol will be excreted through bile so important thing is that and the bile uh, basically is the bile is the form of cholesterol and bile pigment the breakdown of red blood cell so in this way here is you can see that acetoacetate also convert into the fatty acid and this fatty acid synthesis by the fatty acyl coa synthetase and this is the enzyme used for it so it means the fatty acid synthesis and cholesterol synthesis here we had discussed so amino acid and apoprotein uh, amino acid and apoprotein is uh, produced from the ammonia which that is again functional and the amino acyl coa synthetase this synthase enzyme used to produce different type of protein apoprotein albumin and after the conversion of the amino acid so this all this content will be packing this will be packed and this packages of this content in the very amazing conformational changes which produce the inside is the uh, hydrophobic while the outside is the hydrophilic 
inside is the hydrophobic and outside is the hydrophilic zone and this produces the high density lipoprotein and it also produced from the uh, LDL low density lipoprotein with the LDL receptor in the hepatocyte which move inside and that is the endocytosed with the receptor and after this LDL will be convert into the HDL by the addition of the cholesterol as well as addition of the uh, apoprotein. So the protein is also converted into the albumin and go into the blood and this albumin is very important for maintain the osmolality in the blood and maintain the uh, uh, osmosis as well as uh, maintain the volume of the blood. So remember about that due to the negative charge it means the attract the sodium ion to attract the more water so the water retention simply so here the fructose and glucose are present in the blood so let's begin to understand the storage as well as the metabolism so for example iron storage glycogen from glucose in the form of storage so here is the insulin like growth factor one which that is stimulate and uh, due to the growth hormone to influx of the glucose via a sodium co-transport so this is the glycogenin is bind to glycogen synthase enzyme with to form a glycogenesis to form a glycogen so this glycogen is a storage part so after this breakdown of this glycogen to produce a gain glucose and in this way this mechanism is known as the glycogenolysis while on the other hand the glycogenesis is the process in which the glycogen formation so the glycogenolysis is here you can see in the case of sugar basically the metabolism in the form of catabolism of the sugar this was the uh, anabolism but the glycogeno glycogenolysis is the catabolism and after the further secondary catabolites will be formed after the hair is a fructose it can be converted by the isomerase enzyme in into the glucose but here is we will discuss about the glycolysis so after the glycolysis produce the atp and nadh and two pyruvate pyruvate formation it means the two pyruvate formation this two pyruvate is uh, converted into the acetyl coa as well as if the anaerobic respiration uh, due to the high intensity exercise to produce lactate and this lactate will be separate while, while the acetyl coa basically produced due to the oxygen um, oxygen requirement more so the krebs cycle will require uh, for acetyl coa to produce atp carbon dioxide and fadh2 and nadh and this is the electron transport chain which that is used fadh2 and nadh NADH to produce 36 ATP from the one glucose. So let's, uh, next is we will discuss about the recycling. So the liver is also used for the recycling of the uh, content of four red blood cells, RBC and iron and constituent of hemoglobin. So let's draw a structure uh, and we will understand about the recycling mechanism. Recycling means that again and again can be used something which that is you can say that. And here is the red blood cell. Red blood cell is all no, also no, produced from the bones marrow and RBC that is the reticulocyte converted into the erythrocyte and this after 120 days it will be old and again reuse uh, this content. So the Kupfer cell will uptake this red blood cell and this convert into a hemoglobin uh, separation and the bilirubin formation also occur due to the hemoglobin while the globin is the separate from the bilirubin. So the bilirubin formation as well as the globin convert into the amino acid. This amino acid is used for the albumin clotting factor and prothrombin and fibrinogen and uh, C-reactive protein and serum amyloid A and uh, mannose binding lactin. While on the other hand the iron is stored in the uh, ferritin protein. So the ferritin protein will absorb the iron from the ferric. So this is the ferric iron. While on the other hand, the also iron store from the outer, from the circulatory system. So here is the outer side is the um, extracellular fluid while inside is the intracellular fluid. So here is the vesicle. 
this is the transferrin uh, receive the two ferric uh, ion this two ferric ion will be uh, formed and absorbed by the receptor from the transferrin transporter which that is receptor of the transferrin receptor will bind to form a vesicle and this vesicle will be endocytosed with the receptor and this proton will move inside to decrease the ph and the ferric will be ex, ex, uh, in, in, in efflux of the ferric so the efflux of the ferric will lead to separate the ferric and store into the ferritin while the again receptor will be fixed and after the fixing of the receptor that is the transferritin transferritin will move again by the addition of the ferric to ferric to move this cycle so this is the recycling mechanism of the uh, one of the best example uh, for you so here is the conversion we will discuss about this is the conversion mean the one things convert to another so the excess glucose in blood uh, to glycogen and lactic acid to glycogen and stored glycogen to glucose uh, is known as a gluconeogenesis and the gly uh, glycogen to glucose as well as the gluconeogenesis basically the uh, other compound convert into the glucose by this mechanism is known as the gluconeogenesis so in this way here is uh, and glycogenolysis also occur so next here is the fatty acid which that is a beta oxidation to produce acetyl coa and it can be convert into the glucone uh, by the gluconeogenesis to produce glucose while and uh, this gluconeogenesis to produce glucose and this glucose convert into the glycogen while on the other hand it is also produce ketone beta hydroxy butyrate and acetoacetate and ketone this is the uh, this is the uh, alternate pa alternate of the sugar when the fasted state so this uh, ketone will move into the blood circulatory system and the brain use the ketone and this ketone will produce atp through krebs cycle and carbon dioxide will be produced it means important thing is that the ketone is produced during the fasted state why because the blood sugar level will be decrease when so here you can see glucose will enter into the hepatocyte and the gluconeogenesis will be occur uh, uh, are uh, gluconeogenesis to produce also glucose and glucose will move from the blood circulatory system and glycogenesis formation and the glyconeogenesis is also so the glycogenolysis to produce glucose and this mechanism is a conversion and the lactic acid also convert into the acetyl coa so this is the lactic acid also convert into the acetyl coa and this basically is the lactic acid is the production from the long term excess exercise anaerobically and this anaerobic respiration to produce a lactic acid and this lactic acid in the absence of oxygen will produce and this lactic acid also convert again into the acetyl coa and this acetyl coa will again produce the glucose in this process we can say that is the gluconeogenesis because the new formation of the glucose uh, gluconeogenesis so here next is the detoxification we will discuss also so the liver is also important for the detoxification of the harmful chemicals and uh, food additives and pesticides and drug for example the smoking uh, alcohol and carbohydrate which that is also toxic but our liver will uh, detoxify it so let's begin to understand the phase of the detoxification the phase one phase two and phase three the phase one is required the antioxidant dietary antioxidant what b vitamin beta carotene milk thistle and l cysteine so basically this is the phase one and the second phase is also glutathione glut l cysteine leucysteine and choline in inositol and uh, l methionine it means it is produced it is the non essential part while the phase 1 required the essential nutrients uh, essential antioxidant so after this the phase 3 the conjugation before the phase 3 the conjugation will be occur after the conjugation the waste product will be water soluble and this water soluble will be uh, elimination through a kidney colon skin and bile 
so this was the basic concept while on the other hand the complement system in this way the complement system the antigen are present in the if the liver which that is basically into the blood so this is the antigen complementary system produce this c1 complex antigen and antibody complex igg and this will lead to breakdown of the uh, fragment into in the form of c2b and c4b and this c2b and c4b again the uh, combination and this combination fragment formation and is known as a c3 convertase enzyme in this way the classic pathway will be uh, convert into the alternate pathway so this was the classic pathway and this next is the alternative pathway we will discuss in this way which that is the c3 hydrolysis and after that c3 hydrolysis will be c3 will be separate and after this c3 uh, b and c3 a fragments will be formed and this c3 b and c3 a fragment can be uh, bind with a c5 fragments so this c5 fragments to form a c3 cleave cleaves and c5 into convert into c3 a and c5 b and this process is further going on and to cell will be lysis cell lysis so the breakdown of the cell to prevent the infection so thanks